Now case 11. Okay, so looking at this one, um, kind of like the last one, you know, there's some kind of blue material filling up the dermis and in contrast, this one goes kind of throughout, like it's up in the upper dermis as well. Yep. Um, and that blue material is kind of spacing out the collagen, and it looks like it is mucin as well. Good. Um, so when it's both deep and superficial, we think about pretibial myxedema. Very good. And, of course, we got to make sure the site is correct, but this is mucin pretty much filling the dermis, right? In the sense that it's starting to push the collagen bundles out of the way because there's so much mucin here. Much more robust mucin than we saw in that last case of scleroedema. And like I said, that last case of scleroedema was way more mucin than I usually see. That was like almost too good to be true. But here it's like 10 times more than that. And it comes all the way up here. It usually seems to spare the papillary dermis, I've noticed. Um, and, but it starts at the beginning of the reticular dermis and just goes down. And it just looks like a sea of blue. From low power, you could also think, man, maybe this is really bad soil elastosis. But when you go closer, <clears throat> mucin and soil elastosis look similar from low power sometimes. But when you go closer, the mucin is much more loose. It tends to get kind of bubbly sometimes and clear. It all depends. I find that mucin from case to case looks a little different. It depends. It, it seems to be very sensitive to how we process and, and what our H&E is like. And even in the same lab, I find from day to day, mucin can look a little bit different from case to case. So I find that it often gets kind of bubbly like this. Also, sometimes it'll get like little stippled speckles. Like you can kind of see here. It's really better to see that on a glass slide you know, with a good microscope, it's harder to demonstrate on scans. And I find that mucin is also hard to take pictures of. Things that are very mucinous, it's hard to get the white balance correct, and it often gets really pale on a scan slide or on pictures. Sometimes it's hard to get the blue appearance. But here it's really nice. You can see it pretty good here. <clears throat> pretibial myxedema usually presents as, as a pretibial plaques, and, um, <clears throat> and uh, they will uh, kind of have a, a thickened appearance. And um, uh, remind me, what kind of color does it look like to you guys when you've seen it? Have, have any of you seen it in, in clinic yet? Maybe not. I, I sometimes get, don't have a sense of like how common things are clinically because how often I see them biopsy doesn't always correlate with how common their incidence is in clinical practice. Um, but in any case, I, I think they're often erythematous. But I want to say they can maybe be yellowish sometimes. I might be wrong about that. In any case, you can go look it up if you're watching online. But they can be thick and plaque-like on the anterior shins. But also, they can sometimes not be... There are a couple other variant forms clinically. Sometimes they can present as one or multiple nodules. And I've seen cases that were biopsied that looked like erythema nodosum clinically. Multiple erythematous nodules on the shins, and they looked like this microscopically. And there's also a, I've never seen a case of it, but it's been described as a kind of uh, elephantiasis-like distribution where the whole lower leg is swollen and looks massively larger. Um, uh, and that, that can also be uh, confusing clinically, but on biopsy, it shows diffuse mucin. And so what is this disease often associated with? Graves disease. Graves disease, right. So the other name that can be used for this is thyroid uh, dermopathy, I believe. Um, and so oftentimes these patients have Graves' disease. Sometimes this can present before the patient actually clinically has obvious Graves' disease. I have seen a couple cases where they did not yet know the patient had Graves' disease, and it was from the biopsy, and we told them pretibial myxedema, you know, check this patient's thyroid function, and then it came back with a very high T4 and a very low TSH, and they had, uh, they had Graves' disease, they had hyperthyroidism. So it's a good disease to be aware of because it can sometimes be uh, an indication that they have... Um, they have uh, uh, thyroid disease, okay, uh, and Graves' disease. And um, also, I do find that sometimes they get increased pigment in the basal layer. So see this case, how there's increased pigment? Um, and so uh, I've noticed that before, too, that you can have a pigmentation. What was the other thing? Oh, yes, um, I have i don't know. I've never seen it, uh, but I've read about that some people speculate that the reason that um, some patients with Graves' disease get um, um, exophthalmos, you know, the eye protruding, is because of some myxoid deposition um, in the extraocular muscles or the soft tissues behind the eye. But obviously, uh, no one ever biopsies that, so I don't see that microscopically ever. And I have seen one case that I speculated that looked like this in the dermis that also had mucin infiltrating the underlying skeletal muscle to the extent that it was thought to be like a myxoma on imaging. Um, and actually, we've 
been meaning to publish that. I guess I'll have to check on the status of that. Maybe it's still waiting on the resident to finish writing it up. But uh, that was kind of an unusual case that I saw that I think fit best with this. Um, uh, but in any case, there you go. Pretibial mixedema.